Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the first installment of grading your footage. Now I wanna use this opportunity for two main goals. One, I think it's gonna be very interesting for you guys to have the perspective of seeing me work on footage submitted by one of you, but I also wanna use this series to create more intermediate tutorials. And that could range from project management to advanced workflows. Honestly, I've learned a lot recently from kind of paying attention to my own workflows, seeing what works and what doesn't, as well as studying the way others work. Now this tutorial I think is gonna be super helpful for so many of you because it's covering one of my favorite workflows for speeding up my grading process when I'm working on projects with pretty tight deadlines and hundreds of shots. So grab a coffee, sit back, and let's dive in. All right guys, we are jumping into Resolve. I wanna say another huge thank you to Noli Grutas uh, for giving me his footage to work with. This is the first episode of many of the series, Grading Your Footage. I really got the inspiration for this series from my friend Kazi, who actually posted a similar video, and he was using my footage, and it gave me a lot of insights on how he was working, um, where he took the story, and how he applied that story to creating a grade. So in today's tutorial, the two things I wanna focus on, um, aside from actually creating a look, are going to be some of my grading practices when working on projects, how to increase your workflow efficiency, and I'm going to also dig into ACEs just a little bit because I'm sure many of you are wondering about that. If you should be grading in ACEs or what ACEs even is, I want to be sure that I'm offering value to some of you that may already be pretty experienced in this. So I'm not going to be going over exactly what every single tool does. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to set this project up real quick. Right now it's just in DaVinci Y RGB, but we're going to go ahead and switch over to ACEs. There's a couple ways to do that. You can do that at the project level or you can do it at the clip level. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do it in the project level. So all you have to do is go over into ACES CC and then you have these options pop up here. We have an input transform. We're not gonna be applying any input transform because we'll be doing that at the clip level. Uh, however, this clip is actually shot on Blackmagic and it is raw, so we don't have to do any kind of input transform. Resolve is gonna take care of that for us. And the output device transform is gonna be Rec 709. And once that's set, we can just hit save. And now you see what it does to the image. It sort of puts it in a Rec 709 space off the bat, but that is not where we're gonna stop. We're gonna go ahead and add on to this. And I will be moving pretty quickly because I wanna get through a whole lot here. But let's go ahead and add about four nodes real quick. I'm not gonna do a noise reduction node. I'm gonna start off with white balance. Then we're gonna add an HDR node. And then we're gonna add our primaries. And then we'll also add a shot matching node. And this one's gonna be kind of separate. We're not gonna be using it right now, but where it's really handy is whenever you're going through from clip to clip and you need to make subtle changes without affecting the built-in contrast you've kind of established for that given project. So even though we won't be using this node necessarily, it's gonna be here because that's how I would have it on a real project. Now, another thing I would do is if we had you know 50 to 100 shots, I would go in kind of scene by scene and add them into groups. And for this one, we're just gonna add it into a new group. And now we have these two new dots here, and those are just two new tabs. We have a group post clip option along with our timeline. And then we also have a group pre-clip option. And the way that works is the pre-clip tab, anything you do here is gonna be affecting the image before it gets to the clip nodes. So all that would happen prior to what you're seeing here. And then we have the group post clip and that's everything that would happen after our corrections in the clip level tab. And the other cool thing about this is that if you do your grading in the group post clip tab, every single clip that's in that group is gonna be affected the exact same way. And anytime you make a change here in the group post clips, that's gonna affect every clip throughout the entire group. So let's go ahead and do our clips and let's just start dialing in this image. Now when Noli shot this, he was kind of going for a warmer look and there was a lot of yellows in the look he was going for, but I'm gonna kind of neutralize the image, get it back to a clean starting point, and we're just gonna kind of grade this based on how we feel. And this video also isn't so much of a look tutorial, it's more of just a workflow tutorial. So let's go into our primaries. We're just gonna neutralize the image. Actually, we're gonna do this in white balance. And instead of using our temperature and tint, we're just gonna use our offset. And pulling this around. And I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and open up our scopes here. And sometimes I have like my talking head segment here where the camera's fixed on me, but I don't wanna be distracting in this one. I want this tutorial to be pretty straightforward. Uh, so now that our white balance is set, let's go into our primaries and we're just gonna take our gain up a little bit. Don't know what's going on with the flashing here. And then our gamma down, we lift down just slightly gamma up actually. And one thing about working in ACEs is that the controls work a little bit differently. And depending on your preferences, you may like that or you may dislike it. And that is totally up to you. So it's certainly not a one size fits all, but I do personally love the results I get when working in ACEs. So we're gonna continue modifying this. I'm gonna pull the gain down, actually keep moving it up. And I'm a little bit jumpy because I'm using the mouse right now instead of my panel, but I like where this is sitting. And then let's also add in some saturation. It's gonna crank that almost all the way up. And then we can go into our lift and I can see they're sitting a little bit blue. So we're just gonna continue neutralizing it here. And our gamma. And again, at this point, we're not doing any kind of look creation. We are just neutralizing our image. So uh, let's go into HDR and let's see if we can use our HDR wheels to bring anything else out and create some more pop here. 
and already i mean let's just disable let's just see what that did just pulling up the shadows i really like how much that opened up the image then i'm also going to create one more node here and this is going to help create some consistent contrast through our looks and maybe through the entire project and just use our custom curves see if we can dial something in here Okay, so a simple S curve, but it got the image closer to where I want it to end up, and that is the whole point. So again, we're not gonna be using the shot matching node, but let's jump into the group post clip and let's begin our grading process. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay these out for you the way I would have this whole project graded. And actually, let's go ahead and turn our clips off so we have a little more screen real estate here. I'm gonna create another node, and then I'm gonna create a parallel node out of this. I'm gonna have three nodes here, and then we'll create one more serial and maybe one more serial node. Now to start off, I like to work with my hue versus curves. So I'm gonna name this one hue, and then we'll have our look node here. We'll have our skin node here, where we'll do some hue adjustments to make sure our skin fits in with the scene. We're not gonna be using any qualifications though. And then we're also gonna add a just a miscellaneous adjustment, and that's kind of just a temporary name. If I need to name it later, I can do that, but it's just there as a placeholder. And then we'll have one more look adjustment node, and then one more curves node. So I'll go into the hue versus hue here and start making some changes to kind of line this up and give ourselves a little bit more complementary colors to work with. And let's see if we need to make any adjustments to the skin. It's kind of sitting pretty well right now. Yeah, I'm not gonna touch it too much. Um, one thing I also wanna do though is go in to our group pre-clip and I'm gonna add some noise reduction here because if we zoom in, there's really just a lot of noise here and that is, that's probably because it was shot at ISO 1250. However, that's not a problem. We're just gonna set this to three bring our luma up to around six and then our spatial bring this up to around five uh, or seven so that's a much cleaner image now if we disable it yeah it's a night and day difference right there it will be a little bit taxing on your computer but if you wanted to disable it you just have to disable it here in the group pre-clip and then you're good to go okay so back into the clip here let's start building our look and i've recently started using the custom curves a whole lot more than i thought i would and for example on how to do that let's just go ahead and go and click editable splines go into our red channel and let's just start pulling this down i wasn't actually going to pull it down this way but that kind of works and we'll use this to control the knee that taper there and this isn't bad but it's kind of damaging our skin tones but let's just see what we can get out of it yeah, right here isn't bad. We kind of have a look created already. Um, very minimal, but it also didn't damage our skin tones too, too much. And if we need to fix that just slightly, we can do it here in the skin node. And also all of these changes we're making in this grade, the whole look creation process, they're pretty global. They're not gonna be super specific to any given clip, which means they're gonna apply easily across your entire project or across your entire group. And that's the point here whenever you're working with group post clip grades. So also let's go into our blue channel and we'll click this point here and then just pull up a little bit on the low end. That actually may be too much. I'm actually gonna reset that. And you can reset it by clicking this blue channel right here. And let's turn off editable splines. And now I'll just bring this blue end up a little bit at the bottom. And we'll kind of neutralize it by adding another point here in the middle and pulling it down some. And then those two changes are really doing a lot to create this look I'm after. So let's do one more thing. Let's go into the miscellaneous adjustments. And I'm just gonna name this one now that I know what I wanna do with it. I'm gonna name it primary and log. And what I'm gonna do here is jump into the primary wheels. Let's kind of start playing around with this. And I do kind of like it sitting towards blue. I'm not going for an intentional orange and teal look, but because of the way it was shot, um, it does kind of give us those complementary colors and there's nothing wrong with that. Really, it just depends on the story and if the look you're creating matches the story, you're good to go. So I might just take the gamma and pull this up a little more. It's gonna neutralize the image just slightly. And I'm not even sure if we need to do much with our skin tones. Let's go into log wheels and let's see, maybe we can bring our black point down just slightly and push a little more red into the bottom of the image, which should kind of neutralize those shadows. Let's see, we can pull down our high range some. And for now, I'm just gonna disable this noise reduction because it's kind of slowing things down a little bit. So let's jump back into the log wheels. And I like that because it kind of doles out our highlights, but I don't like what it's doing to the face. I'm just gonna leave it as is. And we're just gonna kind of warm up the highlights here. So I'm liking that a lot. And if I did wanna make some changes into the skin node, we would just go to hue versus hue, not do that. Click some preset points here and add a yellow and a red and maybe just push this yellow a little more towards red and then pull the red down, which is gonna kind of bring it towards yellow. And that is not too bad right there. Um, now we'll go into hue versus sat, do the same thing, those preset points. I'm gonna add a magenta as well. His lips are just a little bit too oversaturated and just pulling that down fixes it. And then let's pull down some red saturation. 
or bring it up actually, that kind of looks pretty good. And then lastly, we'll go into hue versus luminance and let's see if we can make any changes that really pop him out. Bringing the red luminance up actually works pretty well. And we'll just leave that there. And then in our look adjustment, honestly, if you just take the gain and you move this around a little bit, you can see how many different looks we get just by where we're placing this. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to manipulate it too much more, kind of like where it's sitting at right now. You'll probably just warm it up just slightly and leave it around here. So now before and after that adjustment, yeah, not too much going on, just a little bit there. So now in our curves node, this might be where I would like add a little bit of a film curve and just kind of crush the blacks a little bit, maybe soften out the highlight roll off, but I've kind of already done that in a few places. So I'll just reset that. And if anything, I might just pull down the highlights slightly, make that a little bit less harsh, but then we'll re-enable our noise reduction to see how that's looking. And everything is really pretty clean. You can also add your sharpening in the group post clip, or you can do it on a clip level basis. If you want to, that's all up to you. But you know, then say we had another shot to go to, we would just copy and paste these clip adjustments to that new clip. And then if we needed to make any corrections, we would most likely do that in shot matching. Of course, if there was any white balance changes that needed to take place, we'd probably do that in the white balance node. And that just about wraps this up. That's it for me, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Watching. If you're new here, do consider subscribing and leave a like on this video if it helped you in any way. And then also leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to learn more about in upcoming videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.